how to choose good field guides and how to use them for nature study. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. A good field guide can be a very helpful tool when you're doing nature walks or nature study. Let's talk about what to look for when you're choosing them and how to use them. Joining me today is my longtime friend and co-creator of Simply Charlotte Mason, Karen Smith. Karen is my go-to person for anything that is science and nature related. So thanks for joining us, Karen. Field guides. What are they? Let's start there. What is a field guide? A field guide is just a tool to help you identify what you see in nature. Does it have to be a book? It does not have to be a book. There are, are apps out there that are available now. So you and can those put them are on your phone. Mm -hmm. Field guides. Yes. Okay. So whenever I go into a bookstore or go to Amazon and look for a field guide, there are so many choices out there. I mean, you can get North America and everything you might see anywhere on the continent, and you can get, you know, just your region, or you can get um, all the animals, or you can get just plants or just flowers. I mean, how do you choose a good field guide? You need to choose based on what you want. Um, Many moms are not comfortable with getting one that's going to have a whole lot of um, birds, for instance, yeah. to have to look through to find what they yeah, need Yeah, it's to hard identify. to narrow them down, yeah. So they may go with a regional one, okay. one that's just for their state. Um, by doing that, it will be very limited because it's only going to be what's most common in their state. So you take the chance of not being able to identify something that might or might not be in your field guide. Okay. So it's a good place to start, but once you gain experience, I do recommend that you move to something that is um, birds of the eastern U.S., for instance. So okay. you have a broader pool to choose from. Yeah. So you, didn't, what you wouldn't jump all the way mm -hmm. to the whole continent. You could do yes. just the eastern or just Midwest yes. or something. Okay, mm -hmm. I got it. And ones that are specific to that nature item, birds mammals, wildflowers, for instance, are going to give you more options for identifying than ones that are more general, that have birds and trees and insects or whatever all in the same one. Okay, okay. So once you choose a good field guide, how do you use the thing? I mean, do you, do you haul it with you out into the field and say, okay, there's a bird, hang on, hang on, I'm looking, I'm looking. I mean, how do you use these things? For birds, it's probably better to take a picture okay. with, your, with your phone or if you have a camera with you, and then you can look through your field guide later because they don't stay still. They don't. <laughs> For things like wildflowers or trees, you can take your field guide with you to help you identify why you're there because they don't move. That's true. So there are different ways you can do it. Um, depending on what field guide you have, you're going to look through the pictures and find the one that is closest to what you saw. Okay, now there's a question, because I've seen some field guides that have illustrations, drawn pictures, and other field guides that have photographs. Which is better? I prefer photographs, because illustrations are an artist's perception of what that looks like, mm. which is great for your nature journal, Yeah, but not yeah. so great when you're trying to identify something. A photograph will show you all the features of the bird, not just what the artist put in there. That makes sense, that makes sense. Now, what are some of your favorite field guides? Can you share some specific ones and maybe why they are your favorites? I will share with you, um, not specific to the nature item, okay, but the, the um, brands, if you will, that I like. Okay. Audubon is very easy to use. Um, it's probably one of my favorites, especially for beginners, because you have, in the beginning, color photographs of everything that's in the book. So you can very easily browse through the photos, find what you're looking for, and then it will tell you what page to go to in the book to find uh -huh. out more information. So the photos are all kind of collected, and you don't yes. have to leave through the whole mm -hmm. book. Nice. Then um, 
Princeton University. Oh, let me ask you this okay. first. I'm sorry, but you said Audubon, and as soon as you say Audubon, I think birds. Are, yes. Is Audubon only birds? No. Audubon has field guides for just about everything imaginable in nature. Wow. Okay. Birds, um, butterflies, wildflowers, mammals, rocks, fossils, wow. uh, reptiles and amphibians, even fish. Okay. So, All right. So you got the whole spectrum uh, yes. with Audubon. What's mm -hmm. another brand of field guides? Princeton University is a, are very good ones. They have um, many photographs in them. So birds, for instance, you don't just get one picture of the bird. Many times you will have um, a picture of the male bird and the female bird and perhaps even one that is an immature bird or a juvenile. How handy. So it helps you to identify. Sometimes the juveniles don't look like the adults. Yes, and then you're stuck. Yes. So, okay, that's the Princeton University Princeton ones. Princeton University ones. Nice. And then um, National Wildlife Federation also has some very nice ones with photographs. And along the same lines as the Princeton University, well, they'll have several different pictures of what you're trying to identify. So kind of helps you narrow it down a little easier. How long have you been using field guides? Oh, about 35 or 40 years. Okay. Um, thank you for passing mm -hmm. along your wisdom to us. I appreciate this. <laughs> now, um, are there any apps you would recommend? You said that you could use apps as field guides. Yes. Some that are really good? Ones that I'm aware of. Um, Audubon has some that are, that are very good. They're set up similarly to their book. And that's ones. for the wide mm -hmm. range that we talked about before, yes. not just birds. Um, they don't have as many in the apps. But they have more than just birds. Yes, okay. a few more than that. Nice. And then um, there's one called Merlin that will help you identify birds. Now that sounds and like the book that you were talking about earlier that you gave to me called All About Backyard Birds. Mm -hmm. And down here it says a free Merlin bird ID app goes with it. Yes. How do those work together? This will allow you to find the bird, mm -hmm. okay? And then there's a little QR code that you can take a picture of with your phone. And then that will open the app, and then it will give you more options. On the app, there are the bird songs, so you can listen to them. Uh, many times identifying a bird, you have to be able to hear its song, and that's very important in identifying birds because you won't see them if you don't hear them. Mm. That's true. That's true. And so often I hear them, but I don't know what I'm listening to. Yes. So and if you know what you're listening to, it'll make it easier to help identify. So what you're, those, what that's how are. the book and the app can work together. Yes. Now, I noticed there were a couple of other books that you mentioned, but they're not field guides. Is yes. that correct? The ones on, on trees? Mm -hmm. um, this one, we have lots of field guides here to play with. This one, um, the tree identification book, I know my husband got one of these, but you don't consider this a field guide? No. What is this called? This is more of a, of a key a to key. help All you, right. steps you through and helps you identify what you are looking at again. But it will start with questions for you to answer and to go through. So it walks it's, so you through the steps. It will walk you through the steps of identifying. Ah. This one has actual photographs. Oh, black and white photographs. They're very detailed. And it has photographs of the leaves, the twigs, the fruit, the bark, to help you identify trees in any season. So you go through and you say, okay, this is what the leaf looks like, and then it'll mm -hmm. tell you, all right, now go here and identify yes. this. And as it walks you through at the end, ta-da, this is what you're looking exactly. at. Exactly. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now that's a big book to take with us in the field. Yes. You have a little one here. I have a little one. Called yeah. Tree Finder. This one is more portable to take with you. Yes. Similar concept, but this one just has little drawings in it. But again, we'll step you through. Does it have this? Does it have that? Go here if it has this. Go here if it has that. And we'll just keep stepping you through until you get to the name of whatever it is you're looking at. Now, this book has a special history with you, doesn't it? <laughs> I've used this book since sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Not that particular copy, Not this though. particular <laughs> copy, but this tree finder since sixth grade. I learned how to use it in sixth grade. Sixth grade was 
a wonderful nature year for you. Oh, it was wonderful. What did you do in sixth grade? Tell everybody. I was um, one of the, there were 120 students in our public school system who were chosen to go to either the city zoo or the nature center for their sixth year class of schooling. I went to the nature center and um, we learned all sorts of things. You went there how often? For the full year. I, that was our year of school. We, we raised chickens on the farm that the nature center had. We, we learned to identify the trees, by, some of them by their bark, many of them by their leaves. We learned um, all sorts of things that you can <laughs> learn at a nature study. The, yeah. the nature, nature center has a pond, forest, fields, everything. And so we spent the whole year pretty much out in nature, drawing wildflowers, learning about frogs and toads and trees and anything that was on the Nature Center grounds. And so ever since then, that love of nature has kept going. And field guides, I, you probably know most of what's in field guides by now. Do you even use them anymore? Yes, I do. Do you? I still come across things that I do not know what they are, and I have to go grab a field guide so I can look it up. Um, yes. That's wonderful. Thanks for sharing your knowledge of field guides with us. I hope that it makes everybody's nature studies and nature walks a little more comfortable. Yes. That they feel like they can find the answers to what they're looking for as well. Thanks so much. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe through iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. You can also subscribe to the audio version or read the blog post on our website at simplycharlottemason.com. All of those links will be in the notes, along with links to Karen's favorite field guides and keys. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time.